Welcome everyone and thank you for joining the Ocoma and MoTeC Advanced Technology Webinar Series. And since the beginning of the pandemic, we have been here with you sharing knowledge from experts around the globe. I am Ursula Costa and I am here with you. I'm Global Head of Clinical and Scientific Affairs at DIH and I have the pleasure to be today moderating Dr. Deborah Bacchus, Director on the Multiple Sclerosis Research at Shepherd Center in Atlanta. On top of being director of the Amos Center, uh, Deborah is a physical therapist, grant-funded researcher and educator, and she has over 30 years of experience in the neurorehabilitation field. Debbie's research activities have a broad scope and includes facilitating pharmacological and device-related trials and investigation of rehabilitation interventions to facilitate greater function, health, and quality of life in multiple sclerosis. She has been instrumental in facilitating the clinician involvement and the research activities at Shepherds and translating research into evidence. I had the pleasure to share uh, some time with Debbie back at Rehab Week last year in Toronto, also at the Winter Academy this year in February. And it's an honor for me to host her today for our global webinar series to learn more about creating an innovation and research culture to enhance rehabilitation technology uptake. Just one few very practical things before we start. We will have a webinar duration of maximum one hour, including some time for questions and answers. Your Microsoft is off, but you can write your questions in the question box, either on the right side of your screen or on the top of your screen if you are uh, connected from a mobile device. You can post the questions during the session. On the chat today, we have Evelyn Aviskerke, a physical therapist, part of the Hokoma clinical application team. She will be happy to help you during the session and select some questions for us to discuss live at the end of the session today. So I don't want to prolong myself any longer really want to invite uh, Dr. Deborah Bacchus to take the stage and guide us through her wonderful presentation. Thank you. Dr. Bacchus, the stage is all yours. Thanks so much, Ursula, and thanks everybody for being here today. Um, let me just get, there we go. I am excited to talk to you about how to enhance rehabilitation technology uptake, um, both by our patients if they're in their homes, but also mostly in the clinic. We have been really, it's a very exciting time. We are seeing the emergence of technology all of the time. Technology to enhance our assessments, to help objectify people's performance, such as walking um, in terms of, excuse me one second, let me just move that. Okay, um, in the lab, but also in the community, in the home, using a variety of technologies that can get right down to what muscles are being activated all the way through how the body is moving in the environment. We also see technologies that are allowing us to deliver task specific practice, both for walking and for the upper extremity and novel technologies in virtual environments and tools that help us to enhance neuroplasticity while practicing tasks. But we often hear that people are very excited about the technology, they purchase the technology, but oftentimes because of insufficient um, strategies and approaches, the technology doesn't really get utilized the way it could be. It's not optimized. Sometimes it ends up in the corner, just you know, with other equipment piling up on it. In the home, it might serve as a clothes hanger of sorts, but it ends up in this kind of graveyard um, where people just aren't knowing what to do with that technology. And that's not good use of our resources. It's not good use of our time. And so what I wanna do today is kind of outline a strategy that starts before the purchase for successful utilization of rehab technology. And with obviously the ultimate goal of advancing clinical practice. And I think of it as a two-part strategy. One is, getting the right equipment. How do you get the right equipment for your situation, for your facility, for your patients? 
And then the second part is using it the right way with the right people at the right time. How do we get clinicians to use the tools once they have them in the right way with the right people at the right time? And as clinicians and administrators and researchers, we've heard this term evidence-based and uh, we are comfortable, I, I think pretty much most people are comfortable with the thought that you need to look at the evidence before making any decisions. And that's true when it comes to purchasing and utilizing technology. But I'm gonna suggest that there's a two kind of hat approach, one as the clinician and one as a business person. And we need to think about it as it's an investment, that it's not just about our patients and their outcomes, but overall it's an investment to ensure that we're getting the best outcomes possible. And this process needs to start before the purchase of the equipment. It needs to involve all stakeholders, so the patient, the frontline clinician, the administrators and leadership, um, the payers. It needs to be an ongoing process and it needs to include assessment for long-term follow-up and reassessment. And this has been borne out in the literature over and over again. And when we think about it, even from whether it's from a, um, a evidence-based clinical perspective or a business perspective, we need to think about why. First of all, why is this technology not getting taken up in the clinic? Why is it not being utilized effectively? And then why do we want the technology and why do we want to use it? And we need to think about that why from a variety of perspectives. 